What's up everyone, another Void here with another first impression for you. I know I do these regularly because I, I look at a lot of games. I'm always out there looking for new games to do play and do new series on and things like that. And it came across, I was playing, a long time ago I was playing a lot of uh, tradable card games, collectible card games. Um, I tried Cards and Castles, you know, the obvious Hearthstone, which Hearthstone I think is a piece of crap by the way. I think it's a, probably the most horrible card collectible card game ever played because it's not complex. It seems very simple, and it's all creature-based, and I hate that. I used to play Magic back before, like, I stopped when Ice Age came out, and, uh, what was the other one? Alliances. Uh, that was a complex card game, because you could play a lot of different decks that didn't have any creatures in it, and there were a lot of different variations. Now, a lot of card games are all about just creatures. Creature spam, creature spam, creature spam. No, that's crap. Make I don't, I don't want to ever have to use a creature or touch someone's life pool. I want other ways to beat them. So anyway, I've been on the lookout for a collectible card game that was really good, and I came across Labyrinth. It's a really good card game. I asked if I could get a key because I wanted to show it on my channel. I liked it, and they said sure. And so basically what you do here is it's like other card games. Let's start looking at decks. Well, before I get into that, this is a brand new indie company. Um... They have a Kickstarter. There should be a link in the video description. They've they've met their Kickstarter. They're at one hundred seventy seven thousand dollars at one hundred fifty thousand. Um, this is in early access right now on Steam. I can't remember if it's alpha or beta. I think it's alpha because there are certain parts of the game that aren't even done yet. So, like quests, store, there are parts of the game that aren't finished yet, which is fine. Um, but it's early access on Steam. You can get it for $10, which is pretty cheap. You get a bunch of cards with it. You get a lot of stuff, more than other card games when you first start out because you get a bunch of different heroes, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, the art is amazing. I love the art already right off the bat. It's knocking it dead with the art. I know they've got a couple art companies helping them out. Um, their Kickstarter page has a lot of information, and so does their website. I really like that. They, they go into a lot of detail about why they're creating this game and how they're doing it. I really like that. It's basically a collectible card game meets RPG. There are gonna, there's gonna be a city map and different places you can go in the city and attack different boss decks or um, dungeon decks, which we'll talk about in a second. But first, let's talk about you play like an RPG, you have a party. This is my party, you get three people. As of this build anyway, there are three people in your party possible, and that's what I have here, you can see three people. If we look at decks, you can see I have four heroes possible right now, uh, and they plan on having a lot more heroes um, as they go along. Right now, they're just trying to build all the different functionality of the game and get it all in. Like I said, let's go back. Um, you can see the quest system and store are, you know, they're not up yet. And actually, defense just came online. This is how you build uh, dungeon decks. Just came online, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Uh, so they've still got a lot more to do. And after they finish all that stuff, they're basically going to be, you know, releasing new heroes, releasing new bosses. Pretty standard for a collectible card game, right? New card packs, new expansions, things like that. So, sorry my voice is a little hoarse. I've had really bad allergies for some reason the past week or so. But it's only affecting my throat, which is really odd for allergies. It's not usually how it works, so... Anyway, again, I have four her heroes available. I'm currently using... The warrior hero, which is kind of a tank. The uh, pyromancer DPS, which is a fire DPS. And then this is my healer, which also does DPS as well. All my characters do DPS. So even though this guy's the tank, um, he doesn't tank that much, actually, it's, which is really weird. Um, you'd think normally when you think of a tank, they're up front soaking up damage, constantly soaking damage, really not doing any damage themselves. They're just trying to mitigate all the da incoming damage. He doesn't really do that that much. Hopefully they come out with more tank cards because he doesn't have a lot of tank cards in my opinion. Really the only one he's got is taunt. That's it. Um, everything else is just like damage and stuff like that. So taunt's the only card that actually gets me to to take damage off my, help, uh, my other heroes and put it on myself. So I really hope they come out with more tank cards. Um, my Pyromancer, really fun... Uh, Hero, all just all damage, um, which you'll see in a little bit. We're going to play the game, actually, duh. I'm not going to just show you my the heroes and not play it. And this is my healer. Uh, she's got a lot of heal spells, but she also has some damage spells in there because 
this game is very situational. Uh, every turn of the game, which they're not really turns, I'll tell you how that works in a second, but they've got a really interesting way of dealing with turns. It's kind of more like a, I don't know, it's more like an RTS, like a real-time thing, but they use a tick system. And I'll tell you about it when we start playing, but basically, uh, at certain, at certain points, you might need to stop healing and start doing damage. Like, you need spike damage right now on this certain minion or whatever, or you're gonna die. And when your characters die, again, according to this build anyway, in this build, there's no way to resurrect them mid-game or anything. They're dead. So, you lose them. And basically the way this game works, like a lot of games, if I'm at one hit point, I'm just as effective as, as is I'm at max health. Okay? I would like to see more games get away from that. I think as you take damage, you should become less effective. But no games do that. Maybe it's too difficult to, I don't know, maybe that's a lot of strain on the system. I don't know, a lot of resource strain, something like that. But, you know, whatever. So, if you die, it's a huge hit you're probably going to lose to that dungeon. Uh, so anyway, this is my healer slash damage dealer. Uh, let's just look at her. Let's edit the deck here. You can see you can have 30 cards, 3 each, which is a lot like magic, how magic works. Um, it's a little bit different because you with Magic the Gathering, again, I, I don't play the newer versions. They might have changed this. When I played, 60 card deck was the norm. 20 lands, 40 spell cards. You could put 4 of each type of spell in your deck, so it would be 40 spell cards times, you know, times 4 here. Uh, they didn't come up as regularly because you had 60 cards in your deck, so that's where that differentiate differs a little bit. But this 30 card times 3 setup is pretty normal for these kind of card games. And is what I would encourage because you want consistency with your deck, and if you have one of each kind of card, it's not going to be very consistent. So you never know what you're going to draw. So I like this times three thing. It's, to me, this is the best way. I've been played Magic for a long time. I played in a couple tournaments. I was decent uh, in my local scene. In one tournament, I walked in and just beat everybody with a deck I just created like two days before to play in that tournament. So I'm pretty decent at card games. And this is the best way, I think, to, to play a deck is to have that consistency. So let's get into editing decks. So you have access. Each hero has access to specific cards for the for that hero. You can see these are faith cards, and this is hero specific. Okay, only this hero can have this this card. Okay, but faith heroes, which I think they're going to have different hero classes, like they'll have more than one faith type hero, but they have access to these faith specific cards. Okay, then you have common cards. These neutral cards are available to any hero. So basically, what you do is you kind of look through each of the cards and you think about what you want your hero to be good at. That you want to have your hero. Uh, specialize in something, right? So my hero specializes in mostly healing, but also some trick damage when I need it, some uh, clutch damage when I need it. Sorry about that. Again, I got some nasty... I'll probably have to go back and edit that out if I remember. Sorry about that. Uh, so as you can see, I've got three of this card available. Um, you can... I. I wish it would kind of tell me which cards I'd pick chosen here. I think, I think the way it's going to work, though, is... When you start uh, opening packs, you're not going to get three of that card. You're going to have like one. So you're going to have to open more packs to get three of that card, right? Um, it's not really explained what all these numbers are and everything. Uh, I would imagine, I hope, they're going to have some kind of how to play this game book or something. Some kind of uh, player manual because I don't know what all these f figures do and all these uh, pictures and stuff. So hopefully they have tool tips at, at some point. They're going to have art on all these cards right now these are just a lot of these are place orders the art actually is coming in pretty quickly actually when i first got access to this game probably a month or two ago only a few cards had art so they're really starting they're really pushing hard on getting art to all these cards which is really essential because if you're going to be releasing expansions you're going to need you know to have your artist freed up right you can use next page here to look at different cards um i think these all these don't all fit on one page oh it's up here so you can see there are multiple pages here uh, for different cards. So, so let's start looking at a few cards here. Channel deals three magic damage to the closest enemy in range five every tick while channeling. Range five. So that's actually a really good card. I should probably actually pick that up. That's actually a really good card because channel means you're going to keep doing this spell. Um, I don't know how long. I think for three ticks. That's what this timer means. A tick is a, 
is a tick of time in the game, and you'll see uh, how that plays out. But basically, this is really neat because if you have something that's not very powerful, a lot of people don't put the powerful cards in their decks, right? You, you, you see this card, it's what you use them when you're new, when you get the legendary cards or whatever, you never touch that card again. And this tick system makes these sort of weaker cards more powerful because you might have to wait a certain amount of ticks before you can do another action. Like... These are all three and two, but you have some that like four. This is a pretty powerful card, spell. You need to wait four more ticks before you can use another spell or a card, right? So that's kind of neat. That offsets the power of each card. Again, sorry, I'm really having problems with this, but I really wanted to get this video out. These guys have been waiting really patiently, and their, their, their game is awesome, and I wanted to show this video. So my throat is messed up. Okay, so... Deal 3 magic damage to the closest enemy, range 5, every tick while channeling for 3 ticks. So that's fifth, or 9 damage. That's pretty good. 3 ticks is fairly short time, so this is a pretty good card. 9 damage is pretty good. In range 5, 5 is a pretty big range. I think this is a pretty good card. I don't have it in my deck because mostly I have healing spells. I'm only, mostly focused on healing. Deal 4 magic damage to an enemy, spend 2 devotion to also restore 4 health to a friend. Again, I really like these kind of combo spells. I can spend two devotion if I need to heal someone, but I can just do damage if I don't need to heal anybody. That's a great a clutch card right there, right? Um, two devotion. Devotion is something you build up over time in the game. Again, there are a lot of mechanics in this game. I don't understand them all. This is a first impressions video. I Hopefully, again, they'll have some kind of a uh, player manual because there are a lot of systems in this game, and I don't know them all. They're kind of archaic a little bit. It's hard to figure out. So... Restore 2 health, this is a common card because none of my other characters have healing. I can hold onto this card and heal my healer when she's getting hurt really bad and I need to save her. So, she can reduce all non melee attack damage that would be dealt uh, to zero. That's great, except this only lasts 2 ticks. So, the enemy has to be casting. Within the next 2 ticks, they have to do something or this card's pointless. So, not the greatest card in my opinion. I might take it out. In fact, I'm going to take that card out because two ticks is just not long enough. Let me put a dam that damaging one in. Um, uh, next time friendly with divine assistance deals damage, they deal double de damage instead. This is kind of cool. That's kind of neat, except it's it's a damaging spell. Enhancements are a little different. What they can they can permanently increase your character's stats for that for the time you're in that dungeon, or like this one, it's until the next turn. But enhancements are really powerful. I like enhancements. I use them a lot because um, because they enhance your character for the lifetime you're in that dungeon, right? Or for the whole time you're in that dungeon. So we've talked a lot about deck building. You can see, just look through all the cards. They're pretty cool. Um, it, yeah, you spend a lot of time building decks. You can also change the name of your deck. Cleansing Heat is what I call this because uh, it has a little bit of damage and it also does a lot of healing. So let's get back. We're going to hit Done. Uh, Fist of Fury, which is a reference to Kung Pao Enter the Fist, if you've ever watched that. you you got to see that movie. It's really awesome. This is my tank. Uh, also does a lot of physical damage. He's, he's a melee character, so he has to be up, up close and personal. But he mainly does damage, and I try to use him to kind of piss off other mi uh, minions and bosses to get them to hit me. Uh, but sometimes they don't go for the bait. So uh, another card that I feel is really valuable, especially for melee characters, is Swiftness. It's a common card. allows you to move three extra squares. You get, I think it's five squares movement per turn, but sometimes you need to get over to the certain area, right? So this is the bet. That's a really good way to do it. Taunt, kind of an obvious one for a tank. Uh, my fire character, a lot of damage. Again, move squares. She has this heal herself just in case. And damage... Just different damaging things. Uh, a re an X damage, which means you can spend X amount, and uh, you do that much damage, which is really cool. Really cool. Uh, so let's just get into it. We've already looked at a lot of this. There's all there are also boss decks. So okay, let's not get into it yet. But basically, I built all my hero decks. Right, I have three, and if you look at where do I put what characters I'm gonna have? I think I do it out here. Out here is where I select. Who I'm gonna? I think. Where do I select who I'm playing? I think it must be in here, actually. The UI's changed around a little bit, and I can't remember exactly how to do that. Select characters. Well, obviously I can 
edit this guy, but I'm not going to use him. Oh, I know where it is. When we go for a dungeon, I, I choose it. So, dungeon decks are based on character, uh, player decks. Okay, you build your own dungeon deck. That's how you defend. So you have offense, which is your party, and defense, which is your dungeon deck. Dungeon decks are slightly different. You have 45 star points, and each of these cards is worth a certain amount of star points. And you can only have 5 spells, 3 lair cards, and 7 perks. So I picked Rog Rogix, Flame Incinerate. Um, he's a decent card, or boss. Uh, a lot of people pick the Awakened Fury, the Warfare boss, because she hits really hard and she has high armor. Uh, armor means, like, if I do 5 melee damage, 3 of the damage will, will be mitigated. So only 2 damage goes through to the boss. She also has really high hit points, which this guy doesn't really have as much. Uh, but he's pretty awesome. Let's edit his deck. This works a little bit differently. Uh, spell cards. Again, certain amount of stars. You can see how many stars each one of them costs. So this one's one star, but pretty cool. Basically, we, all you do is build the deck. The AI takes care of the rest. When someone attacks your dungeon, uh, your dungeon deck, uh, your AI will play. Okay. So spells are what your hero is going to cast or your, your boss. Lair is what minions you will have helping you, which are basically like uh, trash mobs, kind of, right? Uh, Life Stealer is great because it heals my boss, and he's got a lot of health. He's going to be hard to deal with. Fire Elemental does a lot of damage. Uh, that's awesome. I want to try to take these, take them out, right? I only have one. I don't know why I don't have more. I could put more in there, but I can only have three. Mainly, I want Life Stealer because I want it hard. I want it to be hard to kill my boss now. As far as I know, the, when the minions die, they aren't recast. In the previous version I was playing, the minions were recast. So I'm not sure if this is a good strategy anymore. I probably would just go all fire elementals instead, and you'll see why. I have beaten a boss finally. The bosses are really difficult at this point because they don't have a laddering system yet. They do plan on putting one in so that you don't have to fight super hard boss decks right off the bat. You should be able to go after lower level or, you know, boss decks that maybe don't have access to as good of cards or something like that. Perks are just what your boss gets as a perk. I don't know if they have to cast them or not. Uh, I don't see my deck in action, my boss deck in action, so it's really hard to tell. Again, when they have, hopefully, a, a user manual, it will all be explained. But that's basically how you build your boss deck and players fight against your boss deck. So we're going to go fight someone's boss deck. No guarantees that I'm going to win. I've only beat one boss so far. Uh, I got... I. But I know how to do it. It's just it's really difficult at this point because there is no laddering. And everybody has access to the same cards. And the cards are fairly overpowered. I feel like the bosses are pretty strong. And so let's just see what happens. So I'm going to hit play. Okay, so this is where I get to pick who I'm bringing. I don't even have this guy built, so I'm not bringing him. This guy's a melee uh, damaging guy. He's a range melee damage guy. Um, he's decent. I just like the Pyromancer because she's cool. She's a newer hero that, that came out, the most recent one, so I wanted to mess around with her. Uh, so let's start the raid. I don't know what practice mode is. I've never tried that. I think I think you have to, you're going to have to spend spend like in-game currency to raid, I think. That's how it works in most of these kind of games. So in practice, you can just practice and you don't have to spend. I think, obviously, I don't think you'll get any rewards. I think that's how it's going to work. So it doesn't matter. Let's just do non-practice mode. That's not even doing anything as far as I know at this point. Start the raid. So now it's going to pit us against some player's random dungeon, okay? Noah's Labyrinth. He's chosen. Noah has chosen uh, Rag Ragadar, the Horde Caller. So this guy, his defense is equal to the number of minions he controls. So you're going to have to kill his minions. I'm not sure if he's going to respawn his minions or not. The only boss I've ever beat did not respawn their minions. I don't know if that's because they didn't choose any or what. Uh, it's hard to tell. Let's fight this guy. So basically the way this is going to work is there should be a downward spiral. You're going to fight more and more bosses as you go down into the, into the dungeon. And when you feel like bailing, you'll get whatever treasure you've amassed at that point. If you die, if you have a total party wipe, right, or total party kill, I think you lose everything. You don't get any more. So it's kind of a gambling thing at that point too, which is really cool. Do you think you can fight another boss, or do you think you need to get out? Um, when you when you have players that die, I don't think they come back. So when you go to the next dungeon, next level, you don't have you have that many characters you brought, right? As you take damage as well, um, you have to heal up. So you have to wait a certain amount of days, and then the next boss gets stronger as you wait. So 
it's kind of a neat little mechanics they've got. They've, they've disabled that for now because they're probably trying to fit that back in. When they had that mechanic in, it was just random bosses. They didn't have player uh, built bosses. So we're going to fight this guy. He only has 30 health, which is not the other boss that I fought had 45. He has no armor or resist. That's because his defense is equal to the number of minions he controls. So again, I would imagine he's going to be spawning minions as I kill them. He's a brawler, which means he's a melee character. He has to get in your face. Let's fight him. Sorry this is a long episode or video. I know a lot of people like to see short videos. I don't I'm just showing you as much as I know about the game. It's a very complicated game. So this is where you get to review your starting hand and not get screwed over basically by R and Jesus. So I'm gonna look at this. Uh, move three spaces and deal three damage. That's pretty good. And it's a uh, AoE. I like this. I'm gonna keep this because it's a move three spaces. When you begin, it's hard to get close to the uh, minions quickly, so this will help. I have two of them, I'm gonna keep that move up to five spaces and deal three damage so I think this is pretty good okay and knock back three I'm gonna throw one of these away because that's a lot of moving um not sure I'm gonna need that actually no let's keep that because while there, there's a bunch of minions I'm gonna hurry up and kill them all we'll keep all those wind up deal eight magic damage to the closest enemy that's gonna be good I'm gonna keep that a wind up means you are basically held in a casting animation for a while and then you do your spell. Um, so I don't think it's immediate. I think you have to wait three ticks and then actually cast it. But eight damage is a lot. I'm going to keep that because I want to get these minions down quickly. Restore eight health to closest ally in range five. Um, probably going to keep it because it's my only heal spell right now. This is four damage. That's good to an enemy. I don't know the range. It doesn't tell me. I wish it would. Again, they'll, they're will they still working on their cards. I'm sure they will do that eventually. Spend two of devotion and also heal. So that's a good card as well. I'm going to keep that. Channel, deal three damage to the new, each enemy in range three. That's good, but the guy, they're going to be pretty spread out in the beginning, so I'm not sure this is going to be very good. Deal four magic damage to an enemy. That's good because it also only is one tick. Uh, choose a straight line from the caster. Deal six magic damage to each enemy in that line. That's great because it can also hit multiple characters, so I'm going to keep that. These are decent. I'm going to keep them. Uh, so we're going to say confirm starting hand. So you start with like six or six, five cards in your hand. Okay, five. Uh, and you draw a new card every time it's your turn again. Which means you don't have to really worry about running out of cards as far as I've seen. Um, you keep drawing new cards, right? So it's not that big of a deal. And your deck doesn't run out, so you keep reshuffling your deck as far as I'm aware as well. I would like to see an option where your deck runs out. I think that'd be kind of cool that you can't just spend, you know, 10 years. Excuse, watch out, i got to move my chair. There we go, I was running out of a record. You can't just spend 10 years whittling down a boss you need to get in there and hit him pretty hard so that's the starting hand for okay it just was telling me about the boss here are the minions five damage ten life that's what you can see here this is his life on the outside you can see that pretty good uh, I don't know what kind of can I click these guys no there's a hammer he's easy to kill he's only got one health again another one health guy they probably have special abilities I'll probably be taking those guys out first just because they're so simple. I want to get those guys dead so I can actually hit the boss. Because as you can see right now, he has five uh, defense. Which is interesting since he only has four minions. Shouldn't he only have four defense? I'm not sure. I'm not really sure why that is. Alright, so let's get this party started. I think I can start with any of my characters. They're all ready to rock. And I get to move first, which is cool. So I got to choose three starting cards. You see them there, right? Then I got to I pulled two more cards. One defense for one tick. Not very good because they have to hit me within that one tick. So it should be more like one defense for ten ticks. I don't know. One tick seems stupid. I might I'm gonna get rid of that probably. Again, I put it in because I'm looking for more tank cards, and there aren't that many. So, but I think I'm just gonna put more damage in here. It seems like damage is kind of the meta right now. Deal 6 damage to an adjacent enemy, so what I'm going to do is run over here and probably kill this guy. I can do it with one of my cards. I can do it with this card. 5 spaces and deal 3 damage and knock back the enemy. Um, I want to make sure that I want to stay between enemies and my other characters because I don't want them to die. I want my guy to take most of the damage. I do have 2 defense. The other characters don't. She has 1 defense. My power mancer has none. So I need to get in there. Where's that rage? It's hard to tell. Again, there are no tooltips right now. So I'm going to use this card. I'm just going to draw it up. And then 
Oh, that didn't work. Uh, nope. That's not what I wanted to do. So you got to be real careful. It's the way the cards work is kind of interesting. You have to draw them up, but also target at the same time before you let go. So let's do this. Well, I'm not in range. I don't know what the range is on this. Let's check the range. Well, I don't know the range till I. Well, this guy's in range. Let's kill him. So he's dead. This guy should have one less. He doesn't. That is his defense, right? Again, tooltips. Hopefully they'll be putting them in. So that was really unfortunate. Could have had this guy killed. And the UI is a little awkward. Um, you just have to be really careful when you cast your spells. So if I... Let's see. That didn't kill that guy, huh? What happened? Oh, he spawned a new guy. He was like invisible or something. So I need to do four damage to him, right? Okay, so he's in range. This is what the other card should have shown me. When I was casting this one, it should have showed me the range. So let's do that. Again, don't let go. Now I can let go. Now that guy will die. So I probably should have moved first. That was probably stupid. Now I'm two, two to six magic damage to each enemy. That's just going to hit everybody. Nothing to do about it. Looks like it's a wind-up because he hasn't done it yet. You can also interrupt people's wind-ups, which is kind of cool. Oh, it's not a wind-up. Okay, he was just showing me. So I got some fury. Look at these guys don't have a lot of health. This chick's basically almost dead. I don't like that. They need the heroes need more health uh, because it's more. It, the only reason I don't like this is because it's very random number, right? It's very random. Uh, how much damage is being done is kind of random. How you're going to be hit or not is random, and your character can die in like two seconds. So I'm going to move this chick to get her out of the way a little bit. Drag and drop to move her. Then I'm just going to. What's going on with this guy? Again, more tooltip over what this guy's abilities. Is. Okay. Piercing armor three. Well, I don't understand. You're not telling me. Again, they've got a lot of, to do. It gets in alpha. Um, but it would be nice to know more about the minions I'm going up, going up against. Why is this guy gaining health and damage? I don't know. It's hard to tell. I thought he'd be dead. Let's hit him again, I guess. Uh, four magic damage to enemy... In range five that won't kill him now this will and I'm out of range for that character so I guess we'll just do it to this guy because I want to try to kill him oh this that's why there was a guy back here I didn't see that guy let's do the AOE three damage so I'm gaining fury each one of these dudes has a special uh, mana type of thing here so fury I can use to cast spells not yet, because um, I'm still in lock here. You can see this is the tick system. We're on fourth tick of the game. It goes up to 60 ticks. So everybody's kind of in a row right here on who's going to go next. And I will be next. My uh, warrior will be next. And then the pyro, and then the minions, and, and the boss. But if I cast something right here that's four ticks, it'll put me out to tick seven. So that's how the tick system works. That then then I'll come up for to cast spells again. So I'm going to need to heal, heal the Pyromancer. She's hurt pretty bad. And so is this guy. What happened? Again, I don't know anything about these guys. See, this is why this is really difficult. And there's some kind of a chat you can go in and get help in. I don't know. I, I'm really bad at this game. So the cross is 5 health, 5 healing, and 5 damage. That would be a really good one to cast because I could get healing on both these guys and damage on these other two guys right here. So let's cast that. So that should put me to six. It does. Also got damage on the uh, boss right there and killed two minions. Finally, that guy's dead. I don't know what this means. That could bring him back. I have no clue. So he's dead. Now I'm going to kill this guy. Okay. And cancel their windups. That doesn't matter. He's dead. That's something new. Usually you got to wait and click again. That's odd. I'm not used to that. So let's see. What am I going to do now? Six damage to anybody in a straight line. Again, why is this guy gaining damage? I don't know. Ten damage is way too high. This character only wouldn't even be able to withstand one hit, I don't think, from that guy. Way too much damage. Uh, they've got to rebalance. Again, they're going to have laddering, so it's fine, I guess. All right, so. But, yeah, it's a little frustrating. You know, that that's it makes sense why, you know, that it's frustrating. Let's going to hit this guy with six. 
and I don't have enough range because they didn't show me the range so there's that they definitely need to fix that but again it's alpha <laughs> you're just seeing me <laughs> get frustrated but I'm gonna tweet this video back to the developers I'm sure they'll take care of this stuff hopefully please if you devs if you do uh, fix this kind of stuff or whatever let me know and I will tweet it out and let people know that you know you guys are working on it they've done a lot of they really listen to the community and there's been a lot of updates and stuff um, but yeah see stuff like that can happen again this stuff seems to be just crazy that this can happen he must have buffed this other guy maybe he does no damage now this guy used to do damage as well so I need to get up there now because this guy I don't have any pull spells I wish I did they need a control character. That'd be pretty cool. Someone who just does control. Destroy a minion the next, the end of its next turn. So we should just kill that guy. End of his next turn? I don't know. See? What range? Any range? Am I close enough? See, the thing is, though, if I don't heal this guy, I'm going to die. So I can't kill. I need to heal. Because these guys have already taken way too much damage. Uh, okay, let's probably do this. But again, it's a three windup. By that time, it's going to be tick nine. And everybody else has been able to hit this guy. And he hasn't had any healing. I kind of feel like we should just kill off a minion right now. So. Oh, destroy him now. Okay. Let's destroy this guy. Oh, good. He's in range. He's just dead. I spent devotion to do that. I think I only have one left. No, I have five devotion. Okay. Ten rage, five devotion, three magic fire energy. I don't know what that is. It's some kind of fire thing you can use to cast spells as well. Pyro. It's Pyro's turn. I'm going to run away from this guy. Do I have a move card? Because that would be really awesome. I don't. I could deal four damage to him and help kill this minion, and then I think it's just us against the boss. That can't be true because the boss doesn't do any damage unless he casts spells. Each enemy in range three, it's not that great. Straight line deals six damage, probably one the one I will do. So here's an enhancement. If I cast this, all my fire spells from then on deal one extra damage, which is really powerful. It's good to get this in the beginning. I'm not going to use it right now because we're. I don't feel like this is really the beginning any longer. I feel like we're pretty deep into the game, so I'm going to not use that right now. I don't have time to do that. So let's hurt this guy really bad. Now they're going to get to probably kill me. Why is this guy there? He's not even doing it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm dead. So she's dead. I could still pull this off, but it's going to be really hard without my DPS character now. And this guy, everybody's almost dead because he's just a wing the whole board. So five sp spaces and three damage, that's nice, but it's not going to do enough. But again, there's no other way for... Well, maybe we should just heal and let them come to us. So we'll do one defense, just to let this person do a wind-up heal. Defense, okay. Uh, let's do... Wind-up heal is not going to work. Seven, he can get killed, and then I'm done. Oh, well, screw it. I don't care. Let's see if I can do this without dying. Sweet. Okay, so I can kill this guy. And I just got a move, a move card. That's funny. I need to kill this guy. Okay, so let me move right next to him and kill him. There, now he's dead. So this guy has no defense now. He's casting something. What is he casting? Usually it tells you. Summon an honor guard. Okay. In an adjacent space, armor zero. He's got 30 health? Holy crap. Is that the? Is that because this guy has 30 health or what? There goes my wind up. Sweet. And I healed myself. That's great. Did it say adjacent or something? So anyway, there's a lot of UI work, I think, that needs to be done. But it's not horrible. Oh, yes. Okay. He's winding up. I wish I could interrupt him. Till 8 magic damage. I don't have any more heals now. I have 1 for 3. 
So I really need the range on this thing. What's the range? Oh, let's just get closer. I don't know what the range is, so I'm just going to get closer. I'm going to choose health. Oh, within five. It tells you when you actually start to cast it, which is too late by that time. So I've got too many cards now. I haven't cast enough cards. Got to throw something away. So I'm going to throw away that. I don't need a movement spell. Deal six damage. It's time to start taking this guy out. Let's do a knockback, maybe? I feel like six damage is better, though. Uh, wait, that guy has seven health. I wish I had something that would kill... Cancel their wind-ups. Here we go. Uh, what? I can't cancel his wind-up? Watch, it's not going to work now. Escape? Escape? Please? Okay. I thought it was move three squares. Move up to three, then deal three physical damage. Did I cast it? What the hell? I don't even know what's... What is, what is going on here? Did I do anything? Move up to three squares, then deal three physical damage to each adjacent enemy. Oh, okay. Just go. Oh, it still didn't cast it. Oh, okay, you're targeting. Oh, yeah, that's fine. There, cancel his wind-up. That's pretty cool. So he's starting to take damage now. We still might have this. Um, don't give up. This could be a pretty epic comeback. That's damage, damage. Store six health to each ally in range three. Let's do that. And I'm gonna do just do the devotion thing to refresh my turn as well. Nice. Big fat heal. Whenever target friend gains health, deal that much damage to the each adjacent enemy. That's I'm gonna that's a great en enhancement to this guy. Because hopefully he'll be able to taunt them. So he's got one defense for one tick. See, that's why that's stupid. How did he get to cast it right then? What a lucky bastard. Okay. Uh, knockback. I don't really need knockback right now. Let's just do six physical damage. There we go. So he hasn't cast it yet. So he's going to waste his turn. That's going to be awesome. All right. So... Oh, he's doing a wind-up? Okay, so I blocked two of it. Now he's just going to burn everybody. Now we're almost dead again. Destroy a minion. We don't need that. Heal five health to a friend. Three devotion. Also deal five magic damage to enemies adjacent. Okay, that's cool, but I don't have three, so I'm just going to do the five health. Let's just keep everybody alive. Oh, it dealt five damage to him, too. That's awesome. Oh, that's weird. It's really odd that it did that. Okay, um, I don't care about moving right now. Until your next turn, when an, an enemy deals melee damage to you, deal that much back. He's not going to be dealing any melee damage. He's not in one turn, not in one tick. So that would be dumb. Probably need to remove that again, and I need to remove this. I'm getting rid of that. Basically, I'm just going to go all out damage because they're, the tank cards in, are not very good yet. So he's winding up. If I can get... Uh, nope, that's a wind-up. I can kill outright the guy he's about to spawn. So I'm going to do that. Destroy a minion at the end of its next turn. Wind-up. Restore, restore 8 health. Uh, this I could restore 8 health. I think I'm going to do that. Again, I don't think it worked. We'll see. And I don't care about that. Should have... Uh, this is good because you can move back and forth and deal two damage to the dude. I'm gonna I'm gonna cast that. I can move back and forth and it deals two damage each time. Okay, so he does cast his minion, and he's a five five. Oh, I can kill him no problem. Okay, he's a seven five. Store eight health, and she does it to herself again. So they've got a lot of little bit of work to do on their cards here. Let's see if I can just kill this guy. It's a wind-up, though. What cards is this guy? Oh, I can't. Can I see his cards? Uh, three damage and six damage. So I'll just kill him with that. There's Taunt. That's awesome. It doesn't come up enough. Okay, so what can I do with her again? 
Restore heal two health fruit. Well, she's fine. She just healed herself a bunch. Do I have two devotion? I don't. Because when I get hit is when I get devotion. There are also cards that can increase your devotion. I just didn't use any. Heal eight damage to the nearest closest enemy. Uh, I'm going to keep doing that. No, I'm going to do that to the boss. How long does it take? It's a wind-up for three? Okay, and my guy can kill him first, so that works for me. Oh, great. That's fine. It's I don't care. She can't heal him, but that's okay. I'm going to kill this guy outright, so I'm going to move to here. Actually, I'll move to over here. That'll put me a little bit... Oh, then I just did two damage. You see that? Because of that move spell thing. So he's dead. Awesome. Now I did eight damage, so he's almost dead. Good. One more damage and he'll die. So he's gonna... He's winding up to cast another minion. Okay, let's just do this. Three damage to this guy and he's dead. So I win, but they, there's a lot of work to do. On, the, on this game, I think, on the UI. But it's still a really awesome game. It's got a lot of potential. Check it out. It's on Steam for 10 bucks right now. I'm going to talk with the developers about about their UI and just getting little things like that fixed up. Uh, again, and this is pr this is early, early alpha, so um, give these guys a break. They have awesome art. I think it's going to be a great game if they can fix a few bugs and just get the rest of the features in. It's going to be pretty cool. This is normally where you get some kind of treasure chest, new cards, stuff like that. It's going to be awesome, guys. Check it out. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Like, favorite, and comment. Share this out if you like it. Sorry, again, my allergies are flaring up. But pretty awesome little game. I'm going to be showing you a couple more games in the next few days. Let me know what you think. And as always, stay frosty.